So my disclosure is that I'm a practicing physician. I'm not a chemist. We're going to be talking a lot about chemistry. And uh, I found this very rewarding learning about this. And it actually is relevant <clears throat> to my daily practice of medicine, uh, working with uh, toxic metals uh, in all the different patients I have from cradle to grave. I'm originally trained as an internist, so I'm board certified in internal medicine, and I've been doing integrative medicine for about 15 years now. And I treat a wide variety of uh, patients. Uh, I also did a TV show, uh, which you can actually look, look at on YouTube. There's some little cards in the back by the water. Um, I did 15 different topics in, uh, for 90 minutes each. And the guy who was editing these for me was editing them down from 90 minutes down to 20 or 30 minutes. And he got to the toxic metal ones and he said, well, Dr. Biddle, I can't take this down to 30 minutes. The, the, the shortest I can go is 40 minutes. Because every other lecture, you reference the importance of toxic metals and how they influence every other disease. So that's actually the longest talk uh, left. This, this is fundamental to everything you're going to be treating. Our objectives, what toxic metals are, how they cause damage, uh, their uses through history. going to give you a little background, uh, especially in medicine. And we're going to then set the stage uh, for all the other wonderful speakers over the next two days, which are going to take you into, into more depth uh, on these topics. Well, here's the periodic table of elements. <clears throat> I actually keep one of these in my office, and I, I kind of suggest you do too, because it makes for interesting discussion. Um, most of your patients, if you're practicing integrative medicine, your patients are going to be more intelligent, more educated, m more curious, and more self-motivated than the average uh, patients across the country who just want the little you know, purple pill to cure their problems. They, they want to understand these things. And by uh, familiarizing yourself with this, you'll, you'll, you'll learn some interesting things. Now, out of these 105 uh, elements, uh, there's some that are considered to be toxic here. Uh, so the ones in uh, the yellow borders, uh, aluminum, nickel, cadmium, mercury, tin, lead, uh, arsenic, uh, are generally considered to be more toxic, and also uranium. And those are the ones we're going to be talking about. 80 of these 105 elements are considered to be metals. The physical properties of metals are that they have a metallic luster. They can lose electrons to form positive ions. So you'll often see calcium plus or lead plus plus. Uh, this is a, a, a physical property of a metal uh, to form an, a positive ion. They can conduct heat and electricity. Um, 30 of these are generally considered to be uh, toxic. But not all are heavy. There's a real problem with the nomenclature on this. So these slides aren't quite translating right. They're getting a little jumbled. I apologize for that. I hope they're better in the syllabus or on your <clears throat> uh, work here. Uh, for example, fluoride. Fluoride's not a metal, but it's obviously a toxic element. Um, when we talk about uh, heavy metals, uh, heavy refers basically to density. And I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. I'm going to propose to you, and this comes uh, from a group uh, called from the chemistry group, which I'll get to next, that a better nomenclature for this is toxic elements and compounds. An example of this is uh, arsenic and arsine. So arsenic is toxic enough, but when you combine it with three hydrogens and make it into arsine gas, then it's flammable and has a garlic fishy odor, but there's nobody really around to tell us that it has a garlic fishy odor because the time you smell it, you're going to die pretty quickly. So here's a, a, an example of you have a, a, an element and you combine it and make it into a compound and you have a much more toxic uh, compound. Uh, so we need to talk about more than just metals when we're talking about toxicity of elements and compounds. That's the basic message there. People did start to recognize toxic metals all the way back, uh, uh, well, 
through history, uh, but one of the first recorded ones is Paracelsus in the 1400s. And they, he pointed out that all substances can be toxic. Obviously, if you give too much oxygen, you can get retinal damage. If you give too much water, you can get hyponatremia. Uh, if you give too much of, of anything, obviously, it can be extremely toxic. If you give, give more than about uh, 2,000 milligrams of lithium a day, you're going to have neurological problems. So all essential um, uh, and non-essential metals in excess uh, can disturb the biological functions and evoke a, a stress response or even degeneration and death. The degree of toxicity and what we call the therapeutic window varies widely. Uh, in some of my other lectures, I talk about the narrow therapeutic window for iron uh, that you know, conventional medicine believes in a very wide therapeutic window. So if you do a ferritin level and look at the reference range, it goes from 10 to 320. But we know that less than 50 causes problems with uh, restless leg syndrome and memory loss and ADD. We know that over 100 causes problems with increased risk of heart disease. So we make up more narrow reference ranges for some of these essential minerals. I put my reference range 50 to 100 and have to explain that to my patients. You order vitamin D level and it'll say normal is from 20 to 100. Well, I tell my patients I want them from 50 to 80. Uh, so it's a, a different uh, degree of toxicity. It's a dose response curve. Where I got a lot of this information is the International Union of Pure and Applied uh, Chemistry. I'm sure if we went you know, to that uh, conference, we'd see a lot of pocket protectors and slide rules. Um, but heavy metals really is a meaningless term. It's never been defined by any uh, body such as uh, IUPAC. And over the 60 years it's been used, it's been given so many different meanings that it's really a, a worthless uh, terminology. Uh, unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with it because of you know, popular uh, use. Uh, but in the future, we hope to, to get more precise uh, names, uh, such as toxic elements and compounds. And also systems of classification that can uh, allow us to interpret the biological basis for the toxicity. So obviously, fluoride has a whole different way of causing toxicity than mercury does, which has a whole different way than excess oxygen does. So uh, a as this whole field evolves, uh, then we should be able to talk about these in a more uh, educated manner. That's part of what's great about, about these um, conferences is just by being here, you're actually evolving this field of understanding. 